this is a getting started video and we're going to go through the basic steps to set up a new application to use application styling and also cover some of the major benefits that you'll get when you use application styling. So let's start out with application styling and a new project. Before we even create a new project, I want to show you what we've included here. So let's go to Windows Explorer go to the files, you'll see application styling project template is in the install directory for NetAdvantage 2007 Volume 1. If you go into starter kits app styling, you'll see that there's this um, VSI. If you double click it, it'll bring up a dialog. You can step through this, click next, it'll install it. I'm going to cancel because I've already installed this. But you click next and then you click finish and it'll add the template for you. Now, what does that template do? Well, when you go to new website from the project menu, when you open up Visual Studio, you'll notice under my templates, there's a net advantage app styling website. If you click on that, it'll be just like creating a new website, but you'll have the option to include all of the infragistics data for application styling. So what is that? We include the IG res folder in the new project, along with a default subdirectory, and in the default subdirectory, this is a style set, the default style set that will be used for the controls. You'll see a collection of CSS classes, as well as the directory images. Every style set consists of CSS classes and a folder named images. If we look in the web config file, we'll see that there's also a section added here for Infragistics Web, and there's a new attribute, Enable App Styling, as well as a couple other extra attributes, style set path and style set name. So by default, when you create a new Infragistics app styling website using the template that was provided, it puts this in the web config for you and sets to use the style set path at IG res, which is a directory underneath your application root, and the style set name is default as seen here. So if we look at this in the design view, you'll see it's a standard one that will work with just about any application, and it's great for prototyping. You'll get a decent looking application without any work at all. But this isn't good enough for most of us. We want to see something nicer. We want to really see colors and gradients and um, all the fun stuff that we're used to. So how would we go about doing this? Well, included in that advantage are Infragistics style libraries. And we can browse through this. This is in the um, install directory. And you'll see a bunch of different folders. And each one of these represents a separate style set. So you can choose from any one of these. And I'll show you how easy this can be. So go into Start Programs Infragistics. And you'll see App Stylist. Oops. So if we click on App Stylist for ASP.NET, the NetAdvantage App Stylist for ASP.NET will load. It takes a couple minutes because it's got to load all of the uh, files necessary. And we can open a style library or create a new library. So what we're going to do today is create a new library, but we're going to start it based on an existing library. Now, the existing style library is the one that, you, that we browsed to before inside of here. There's this single WSL file, the .wsl extension, and that defines each one of these style sets. So by using that WSL file, we now can enumerate the list of style sets that are included, and each one of these is its own style set. So we'll pick one here, maybe we'll go with rubber black, and we'll create our library. We're now creating a new library based on an existing style set. What this is doing is basically creating a copy of the files that are already there and putting it all in the directories where it belongs. Inside of App Stylist, if, you're, if you haven't used App Stylist for Windows Forms, App Stylist consists of a role tree, which is what's seen here, along with canvases for seeing the styles while you're setting them. So for instance, if we wanted to see what a grid looked like with the rubber black style, we would click on the grid tab. This is what the grid is going to look like. Editors, you can see editors including spell checker, 
tree, and so on. We can click through all of these to see the different styles. One thing to note is that there's style set properties and canvas options. Canvas options is important because you can turn on and off features of a control that may affect its view but aren't necessarily appearance related and don't belong in the style library. So for instance, if we wanted to turn paging off, we would click here. We could do the same thing for, um, let's say, add new row or add new box. If we knew that our application wasn't going to use these, we don't want our view when we're designing to include these because it's not necessary. So we'll uncheck a couple of these and we'll get rid of the add new row. Okay. So if we go to the grid, you'll notice that as we hover over the items, the role on the right is changing and you can see what roles are affecting the current display of this item. So for instance, if you were to hover over this row, you'll see that the UI roles affecting it are the alt role, the item role, and the control row. We can go associated with that. So in this case, let's change the alternate row, which is associated with the number one. That's our keyboard shortcut. So we'll press number one on the keyboard, and you'll see it navigated to the alt row in the role tree on the left. Now, if we want to change something on the alternating rows, we can go into the editor here and change our values. So let's say we wanted to change the font color so we can see this change in effect. Let's say we wanted to make it a lighter gray. We would select that value. And you'll notice now that every alternating row is a light gray text color. And we did that simply through using the editor. And with the keyboard shortcuts, we were able to quickly navigate through the roles in the role tree. You could also go up into the role tree and change these manually. So let's say I wanted to go into shared and go to the control role. Now, perhaps I wanted to change the text color that was default in the control tree. So I would go to the control role here under shared and choose a color here. Now, as long as this color isn't being overridden anywhere in a lower class, this color value will take effect. So let's see what's inheriting from control. We can change the color to red. Give it a minute and the canvases will reload, taking our values into account. And you'll see now that the rows, the non-alternating rows, now have a red text color. If we go into other controls, you'll also see things like the web group box, toolbar, items in the list bar, everywhere where the color was not specifically set will now be red. So if we want to look at why some of these colors are not red, for instance, the list bar, you can see that the list bar inherits from button and control. So if we go to the button style, you'll notice that a color is being set here, a color of white. So the default for the list bar in rubber black is to have a background color of white. So even though at the highest level you're setting control to say, give me a text color of red, the list bar itself can override that value and say, I want a color of white for my default instead. And that's what, what is happening here. And now let's save this out. So we'll save our style library. And let's choose a folder for the website that we're working with. So we'll go to a website. And we'll save it inside of IGRES. And if you hit refresh here, you'll see there's now a rubber black folder. To use this style, we can simply go into the web config, find our style set name, and change it from default to rubber black. We'll save that. And now we can view this in the browser. So our site that was pretty bland before, just using the default gray styles, 
now has a bit of styling to it. You'll notice the Explorer bar on the left with the white group text and red item text and the alternating rows. All of the styles that we modified through the app stylist are modified here. And we can again open that through app stylist and continue to make changes. So perhaps we want to change the alternating row back to black. We would go here, go to the row alt color, and we can change this to black. Or perhaps we want to go back to the default, which is even better, so we can let it inherit from a role higher up. And we want to get rid of this red, too, because it's not really matching our, our style. So we'll go back to the control style, and we can go back to the default here. Now we're back to where we started from, and we can save this. File, save. And if we were going to go back to our application and refresh, you'll notice everything changed back. And that's because App Stylist is working directly with the style sheets that are in your project. There's no intermediate files. There's nothing in between. And this enables you and somebody else to work in conjunction. So if you had a separate person styling and you were working on the back end or vice versa, you won't step on each other's toes, especially since all of the style information is contained externally to the ASPX pages. You saw I didn't have to do anything inside of the ASPX page to change these styles. It was simply done using the web config file. And if I wanted to modify an individual style, I could do it through App Stylist. Now, if you don't want to use App Stylist, if you just wanted to make a small change and you feel comfortable going into the CSS, you could do that as well. You can go into any one of these CSS files and you can modify the classes yourself or add an additional item in there if you chose. So that's a quick intro to using App Stylist and it should give you an indication of how quickly and how easily you can apply styles. But if you're not sold yet, let's do one more. We'll go back here into App Stylist, and we'll import another style set. And this time, let's use Apple Teeny. We'll import the style set. And as soon as that's done loading, we'll save this. Now that we've saved it, we can go back to our application. We can go to our web config file, and we can change this to Apple Teeny. We can refresh this just to make sure it's there. And now let's view this again. And there we go. The application is now styled with the Apple Teeny style set. And all you had to do was make a single change in the web config file. Now, in case you don't want to make the change in the web config file, you can also do this on the control level or the page level as well. So if we were to go into this page and go to any one of these controls, you'll notice it has the same properties that we see in the web config, style set name and style set path. So I can exclude this control from application styling by setting enable st app styling to false, which will immediately or instead, I can change it to use a different style set. So perhaps I wanted to make this use rubber black. You'll see, now this is using rubber black, while these other components are using Apple Teeny. Here, we'll refresh our application. And the list bar now is rubber black. And the other controls are still using Apple Teeny. So now you saw how quickly and easily you can change styles in your application. You can change them at runtime by changing the style set name of an individual component through code. You can change them at design time through the control itself or through the web config. And you can edit the styles using App Stylist. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.